Uh, Mr. Chain, would you like to begin with your testimony? Also a resident of the Fight in 15th, so. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> We're glad to have you lead off, thank Mr. You. Chain. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I will. I will be brief. I know this has been heard before. I'll try and keep it to what, what's what's new or what I think is particularly relevant. Um, just as by means of introduction, so everyone knows, we represent 43 food banks across the state, including Food Bank of Contra Costa, Solano, and Alameda County. Uh, collectively, we're serving about 650 million meals a year. But the gap estimate, estimated by Feeding America is still one billion on top of that 650, right? So that's the gap we're trying to address. Another, another way to look at it is there's more than five million hungry Californians, including one in four kids, yet our food bank network is only reaching about two million, all right? At the same time, again, we very much appreciate the hard work, the well deserved work by both the counties and the state, been recognized by USDA, but nevertheless, we are still only reaching two out of three families who are eligible for CalFresh, all right? that's still a huge improvement. All right, at the same time, as we just heard, and I know you are well aware, we've got more than a million folks on SSI who are categorically ineligible for CalFresh. So there's, that's right, that's the situation. All right, um, and I would also point to the handout that's coming around that shows that nationally, uh, even in states where SSI recipients are, you know, uh, eligible for CalFresh, and even where participation rates are as high as 100%, like Washington, Still nationally, a third of families who are receiving SNAP benefits or CalFresh are going to food banks because congressionally, the, the benefit levels are just too low, right? So that, that hunger gap is still very severe. So why CFAP? Our $10 million request uses existing CDS and CDSS infrastructure in which the food bank in every county would make purchases for only California-grown foods. So we're talking connecting California ag to our hungry communities, and then they're reimbursed with very low overhead, very easy administrative process with the department. Um, there's been two one-time uh, funding allotments from the Assembly Speaker's Office, and so there's a very good proven track record, um, very good existing relationship with the department, um, and I would just underline that because we use enormous quantities of scale, that $10 million request would provide some 50 million meals, right? So it's a very substantial increase. It would make a real dent in hunger, but it's also one that we can accommodate given the scale at which we are already working. Um, and lastly, as, as you know, Mr. Chair, there are severe costs to inaction. We know that hospitalization spike. We know that children's academic, mental, and physical health suffer when they go hungry. This is a proven way to prevent that, and we thank you for your attention. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, good afternoon, Kevin Asley and Coalition of California Welfare Rights Organization. I think it's commendable that we try to get over 400,000 children on Cal, in, in CalFresh, but I think we also have to try to remove barriers uh, in, in, the, in, the, in achieving that goal. And one of the barriers is too many recertifications. Recertifications cause churning. So we have a proposal over here to say that the recertifications have to be to maximum amount liable by federal law. And that's our proposal. And that will save money because more certifications than required by federal law will cost more administrative money, unless we we'll need more people participating in the, in the CalFresh program. Thank you for your consideration of our proposal. It's Thank you. Writing. Thank you, uh, Director Lightborn or Chief McCoy Wade. Anything additional? Nothing to add. They Thank like you. It. They, of course, of course, they like it. They like Thank it. you. Um, anything from the LAO's office? Anything from finance? Is there any public comment? continually been in support of the emergency food request and we continue to be in support this year we think it's a very good investment of dollars we hope you're supported in the end thank you thank you hi Carly Finkel representing the food bank of Contra Costa and Solano counties um, and CFAP is extremely helpful in supporting us last year we distributed over half of the food that we distributed was fresh fruits and vegetables and produce uh, which is generally more expensive to purchase and store and distribute and so funds like CFAP really help us afford to provide nutritious foods to folks in our community so thank you thank you any additional public comment um, so the committee is not taking action on this today uh, but is something we have heard is very, it is very compelling. Um, the number of Californians who are hungry and particularly the number of children. And we have had uh, many conversations in this committee um, between now and last year where we talked about the importance of more support 
for people in SSI and SSP. Um, as recent as yesterday, uh, we've been involved in conversation on a um, on another on another committee uh, at which I serve in a, in a piece of legislation that we've been working on. I say all that to say that we hear you while we're not taking action today. We know it's a very compelling issue, and we intend to continue the conversation until we find some solutions. We thank you. Yep, thank you for your testimony. Thank you. We're moving on to issue 10, our final item. It's uh, child support services, program and budget review, and governor's proposals for 2016-17. Uh, we invite our witnesses to come forward. Uh, Alicia Griffin and Mark Beckley from the California Department of Child Support. Uh, we also rep uh, invite uh, representatives from the LAO's office and the Department of Finance to come forward. Welcome, Dr. Griffin. We are ready whenever you are. Good afternoon. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, um, Alicia Griffin, representing the Department of Child Support Services for the state of California. We are the single state agency responsible to the federal government and to the state of California for administering their child support program. Um, it, we encourage and ensure that children are supported by their parents. Um, through services delivered both by our agency directly and by our 50 local child support, age ser support services um, agencies in the counties. Um, we are currently serving, our active cases are running at 1.2 million, which really means that over 3 million families receive services from the department annually, um, and which is a very large amount of the population, um, and it represents 8% of the national total child support caseload. Um, I think what's really important for me to highlight for you today is really through our new strategic plan that we have been focusing on working more collaboratively with our parents to ensure that parents really establish good orders and good plans for their children. Um, and we've been improving access and customer services at all levels, making it easy for parents to apply and gain services, but also to ensure that parents are able to meet their obligations 24-7. Through those programs, collections increased last year by almost 2% to $2.3 billion. But most importantly, over 3% of the families received, uh, had an increase in making sure that 75% or better of their child support was paid annually. Um, and we find that wage continues to be our best source of employment. And with the economy up, that has made a big improvement also in our collections. But again, um, direct parent payment is a really quality level of uh, continuing support for their children. Um, and lastly, I'd like to continue to, to focus on the fact that we also improved on all five of the federal performance measures this year. Congratulations and thank you. Would you like to continue? Do you have additional? Absolutely. Um, good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members. I'll just, um, we don't have any budget um, expenditure proposals pending before the committee, so I'll just make a few brief remarks about our budget and um, give you some um, just updates on pre prior budget actions that have been taken. Um, the Department of Child Support budget appropriation is um, $1 billion. Um, this is um, funded through a combination of federal funds, state funds, as well as a small portion of voluntary county contributions into the program. Um, the federal government does match every state dollar invested into the program on a two to one basis. So for every one dollar of general fund we invest into the program, the uh, federal government provides two dollars. Um, in terms of um, updates on prior budget actions, in 2009, the legislature had appropriated $18.7 million dollars um, for the program in a proposal called Revenue Stabilization. Um, this proposal enabled us to retain 226 um, casework staff. That enabled us to stabilize um, child support collections. And I'm pleased to report that um, through the retention of these staff, we have been able to retain $126 million in child support collections that go directly to families, as well as $8.1 million in assistance recruitment collections um, to the general fund. The other proposal um, that I'd like to provide an update on is in 2014-15, the legislature approved a three-year um, budget change proposal um, to allow us to convert uh, vendor staff that support our IT system to state staff. 
Um, we're in the third year of that BCP in 2016-17, and we'll be converting 27 um, vendor staff positions to state staff positions. The positions that we received in the current year and last year, we have been um, successfully able to fill with state civil service positions. So we're really happy about that. Um, and um, I also want to note that um, there's a, uh, in the agenda a reference to the ARC trailer bill language that provides a technical correction to ensure that our child support customers continue to receive um, a $50 disregard payment. Um, and we're fine with the minor technical revisions that are proposed for the trailer bill. Um, that's all I have to report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Beckley. Uh, anything from the LEO's office? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Ginny Bella with the Legislative Analyst Office. Uh, in regards to the trailer bill, we agree, agree with Mr. Beckley's um, analysis that it's really a technical clarification and we have no concerns with it. Thank you. Anything from finance? Thank you. Any questions from the committee? Any public comment? We are agendized for action on this item, our final action of the day. Um, the recommendation is approval of the proposed trailer bill language as placeholder, removing the language that reads that this statutory clarification is declarative of existing law as this is unnecessary. Refinements to the language may be made consistent with this action in the trailer bill process if any technical issues are raised. Can I have a motion? There's a Motion by Mr. Chu, second by Mr. Harper. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll? Chair Thurmond? Aye. Ting Chu? Aye. Obernolte? Harper? Aye. We're going to leave the roll open uh, for members who need to add on, uh, but we do have three, and this item is passed, but we will leave the roll open uh, for any members who need to add on. Thank you, uh, Madam Director, Assistant Director. Thank you to all of our staff. Uh, thank you uh, to uh, everyone who was here today on this very historic day for us to do all that we can to help our families who are in deep poverty. I want to thank my colleagues on the committee for your incredible work and commitment to the people of California. Uh, the meeting is complete, but we will leave the role open for those members who want to add on.